The view is absolutely sensational and the temperature in the high 20s. You're looking at a picture live cam at the moment where it's nearly 10 o'clock in the morning in Hawaii. Uh, beautiful surroundings in difficult circumstances in a major blow for U.S. tourism. One of the country's most popular vacation spots, Hawaii, is reinstating COVID restrictions. It follows a surge in cases. More than 45,000 cases of Delta have been reported, whilst cases and hospitalizations across the U.S. are generally much lower, on six months lows. So in Hawaii, limits on social gatherings, bars, gyms and restaurants, indoor capacities cut by half. Joining me is the mayor of Honolulu, Rick Blangiardi. He joins me now. Mr. Mayor, thank you, sir. And um, we understand the necessity for these new restrictions or the reimposition of these restrictions. Do you think that you opened up a little bit too fast? No, I don't think we opened up fast. I think what we didn't anticipate was the infectious rate, if you will, of this and how the Delta variant has come upon us. We were really pretty close to getting out of the tunnel, so to speak. We had enjoyed the benefit, even though our economy took took its hits, we had the benefit of the lowest case counts in the country, the lowest death rates. You know, our positivity rate was low. We really, at no time throughout the pandemic, mm -hmm. suffered any kind of a, a, a drain or, or, or pressure on our hospitals, or especially our acute hospital care. Mm -hmm. So we, we were sort of ready to welcome people back, but this Delta variant in the last two weeks has sort of changed the narrative and our thinking because our case counts are up pretty, pretty dramatically. And that, of course, will affect the way you, uh, you, you know, tourists will, will, will be able to enjoy your beautiful islands. Also, the vaccine mandate that you have introduced. Well, now, you're, not, you're not messing around here, are you, with the vaccine mandate? It's, no, I'm not. It's, it's, but I, you, 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 get, you get vaccinated or you face disciplinary action or termination. Well, yeah, let me just go back, though. Our Safe Travels sure. program is working, you know, and, and we're taking in over 30,000 visitors a day as opposed to 2,000 a year ago at this time. And uh, actually, our degree or rate of infection among our tourists coming in has been very low, less than 2%. Right. We've had other issues with communal spread, again, all relatively new. We, with respect to um, what we're doing with our city and county workers, you know, we're in a situation now where uh, nearly a million people in our state have been vaccinated. Uh, we've got two, uh, 211,000 kids under the age of 12 statewide who are not eligible to be vaccinated, which leaves us a population base of somewhere between 225, mm -hmm. 250,000 people. What we're trying to do is, in or really on a four to one majority, is appeal to those people in the minority to help us keep our workplaces safe. That is the greater responsibility. And uh, you know, last week we made that announcement and a number of private businesses have now stepped forward and encouraged or requiring their, their, their employees to be vaccinated. Up till now, we've not had mandatory vaccines, uh, but we're really trying to get us through this, given our vulnerability, if you will, of being out here in the middle of the ocean. Our hospitals have not been over pressured to date, but with the case counts up the way they are and the positivity rates, I'm looking to mitigate that circumstance from happening because we can ill afford to have that happen. Can we talk one other issue, which I know might seem somewhat quaint, bearing in mind <laughs> the way we're talking, the issue of over tourism. Uh, because we cover tour a lot of that on Quest Means Business. The, the, the question of tourism and managing the future of your tourism industry. COVID is going to right. go away at some point. And at some point, right. the tourism numbers will come back in very large numbers. Yes. How far, sir, have you, are you taking the lessons and saying we cannot, particularly in Honolulu, we cannot go back to the days of over-tourism? Well, in 2019, we were overrun. We had 10 and a half million uh, visitors. Three million of those visitors stayed in illegal vacation rentals. If you look at the hotel capacity at a high occupancy rate, rate statewide, it can probably handle between about seven and a half million visitors. And that's assuming a 90% occupancy, which most people would kill to have that kind of occupancy. So that's sort of the sweet spot in our visitor industry, somewhere between seven and a half and maybe eight million on the outside. So the city now, we've stepped in because it's our responsibility on the management of those illegal vacation rentals. And we're about to pass ordinances. We've got to go through this in processes and protocols. Um, but the last thing we want to do is be overrun by tourism, which not only subordinates our local people 
and creates a lot of havoc in our neighborhoods with these illegal vacation rentals in other extenuating circumstances. But it also, I think, lessens the quality yeah. of the experience somebody has. You know, and we don't want to do that. We want we want people to come to Hawaii and have that dream of their lifetime become fulfilled. Having been there, sir, I think we might even have some pictures of me surfing in a second. Having been uh -huh. and done world and reported for business traveler from Hawaii, I can. Ah, there we go. Me on the beach. I promise you, sir, you don't want to see the results of me trying to surf in Honolulu. It was not a pretty sight. Uh, wonderful place. <laughs> we, we covered a lot of ground, sir. I'm grateful that you've given them to us. Thank you.